This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. I'm Dr. Jimmy Stewart, host of the original Southern Remedy, the show where I answer your medical questions. Subscribe to the podcast by searching for Southern Remedy on any podcasting app. From MPB Think Radio, this is Money Talks. Kevin Farrell here with Dr. Nancy Lotridge Anderson, president of New Perspectives. Nancy is a chartered financial analyst. You know, on Money Talks, we're here to answer your personal finance questions, but today we're also going to talk about ways to pay off your debt. We'll discuss several different ways to reduce the money that you owe. You can always email the show as well. The address is money at mpbonline.org. We usually don't have time to address emails on the air, but Nancy is excellent at replying to your emails. In fact, I believe there were a couple this week, Nancy, that you were able to respond to. There were, yeah. So we try to get to those as quickly as possible. If you'll just uh, have some patience with us. I want to try to respond in as best a manner as I can. And sometimes I don't have the full picture, Kevin. And so I try to tell people, you know, I may not know everything about this. And in some cases, they just need to seek other help. Uh, but uh, as a reminder, if you are going to send an email, I think that it's it's a slower process, but you might get a little bit more of an in-depth answer. But again, I would say uh, try to give uh, Nancy and or Ryder as much information about the situation as you can so that they can give you a most informed decision. So, Nancy, uh, what's uh, in the news, financially speaking, this week? Oh, just a few things, Kevin, just a few things hovering around. A couple of them um, could be resolved. And, of course, we are watching for a possible government shutdown, and the odds are that it's going to happen. Uh, the question is, uh, if it does, how long will it be before they all come to their senses? Um, this is a self-inflicted wound. Um, it's really ridiculous as far as I'm concerned, but it is real as far as the impact on regular folks. A lot of programs will be stopped. Uh, A lot of federal employees will have their paychecks delayed. And certainly that has an impact on the overall economy because, you know, then you can't spend like you were spending. So there is some some serious concern about that. The other thing that could be resolved is the auto workers strike. And so we're watching that because that um, comprises a lot of people, a lot of parts of the country that would uh, have that ripple effect when those people are not working and collecting a paycheck. And then there are a couple of things that we're also paying attention to that, um, you know, the price of oil, certainly that affects all of us as we gas up at the gas pump, even those who are um, have moved over to electric vehicles, that's not everybody. So the rest of us are dealing with higher prices at the pump as oil is now sitting around $90 a barrel. And that's just related to some crunches in supply right now. And then the other thing is interest rates. My goodness, mortgage rates are topping 8% for a 30-year mortgage, and that is having an impact on the housing industry. So a lot of things really weighing down the economy and weighing down our markets. And we're seeing that reflected in our numbers even this morning. A couple of follow-ups there. Earlier in this this strike, I thought it was interesting that um, it was not being expanded against Ford. So it's curious to me. The, the the union felt that they were making maybe more progress with the, the poor? Possibly. Uh, they're trying to be very uh, strategic with who they are targeting and even targeting um, – supplies so that they are it's hard for them to do repairs those kinds of things that the, as they're trying to get management to come to the table um, I do think they have some arguments for some things I hope they don't go overboard and I do have concerns about the general economy in those areas and how that will be affected because these people aren't collecting a paycheck and help me out here if, if, if you know this is are the workers that are striking workers both in like assembly plants and the the industries that supply parts and those sorts of things? I'm not sure about that 
at this time. Uh, they've been calling for strikes at various places. It's not um, an industry-wide strike at this point, and uh, we are starting to see some progress in areas. I think in Canada, they're a lot closer than we are here in the States with resolving some of these issues. And Because I think there are some workers in Mississippi, I believe, who mm-hmm. are on strike. And when you look at, um, and, and they do have an argument again, when, the, when you look at how much their top executives are being paid versus what the people who are doing most of the work are being paid. And the U.S. is a, an interesting case where the difference between those top level people and the bottom level people is really wide, much wider than what you'll see in European countries and European companies and in Asian companies. Um, we pay our top people way more than we pay the regular folks on the line. And so, you know, the regular folks are saying, look, I I put you there. I'm giving you the profits. How about sharing some of that? So, Nancy, the Fed, I think they chose to not raise rates. Is that correct? Right. And we call it that a pause. And uh, because they have uh, reserved the right to raise them later on, depending on the information that they get. The big thing that's causing some concern about inflation has to do with oil prices, which I mentioned just a few minutes ago. So now that we're paying more at the pump, even though other prices are tamping down, that is leading our inflation numbers to look higher, which means they're going to be a little bit more aggressive. And so any interest rate increases are going to slow down all kinds of activity. And it took a while for that to really start to filter through, Kevin, but now we're really starting to see it. People are really slowing down as far as making those purchases, taking on debt, because you have to think twice about what that monthly payment will be. And so the theory was the interest rates were being increased to help control inflation, but they don't want to increase them so much to to damper too much economic right. activity. They, they don't want to tip us over into recession, but that is a delicate balance, and that's very difficult to do. So we are watching that. Um, you know, we talked a few weeks ago about this This talk of recession has suddenly filtered away, and they're all going, oh, what recession? That probability has gone way down. But with all of these things popping up, the strike, the government shutdown, the price of oil, rising interest rates, I think that probability is starting to rise a bit. And again, help me if, if if you remember, but the the shutdown, I I can remember a couple, I guess. I mean, generally they don't last long because there's even a, a more sense of urgency once the government does shut down. Well, that's what you hope for, um, and you hope that the constituents who are being affected by the shutdown, who are not getting a paycheck, who are not having their um, their programs being supplied, um, folks who can't go to the national parks because they're closed down. All of those things uh, will cause people to really start yelling and create some sense of urgency among our congressmen. We're hoping. This is Money Talks on MPB Think Radio. Our website, moneytalks.mpbonline.org, is one way to hear past broadcasts. You can also download the MPB Public Media app and listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand to all the local MPB Think Radio programs. In addition, just a reminder that if you have the Public Media app, you can also uh, access uh, content from MPB television as well. Kevin Farrell here with Dr. Nancy Lottridge Anderson, president of New Perspectives. Uh, we are ready to answer your personal fin- Well, Nancy's ready to answer your personal Oh, you're not going to do any of that, Kevin? <laughs> I'm just along for the ride. Okay. <laughs> well, actually, I, I, I it could be the advice I give you don't do, and then you listen to what Nancy says. So that might be... Uh, I don't know. I think you've given us some stories along the way where you paid attention to something we said and well, made a difference. You know, I produced the Monday uh, Southern Remedy show, and uh, Josie Bidwell, the host, was kind of saying the same thing. So it's like it, if you do something long enough, even as thick-headed as you can be. It gets through. Some of it begins to penetrate. So, yes. <laughs> so we're going to be talking uh, between phone calls about ways to uh, reduce your debt. Uh, so when you decide that you want to, you know, get rid of some of your debt, what's the m- uh, frame of mind you think is appropriate? Well, I think you need to approach it as this is a challenge. Um, I even like to say, let's make it a game. And how can I set this up and game it all the way out, whether it's through um, a digital spreadsheet or you put uh, pen to paper, and you can look at there will come a time when all that money that you're paying towards debt 
for those shoes, Kevin, that you bought two years ago is gone. And now look how much you'll have to be able to save for retirement, to do fun things. All of that relief will then come at that point. So really looking at it and planning and seeing it as this is a challenge. It's a game. Um, if I do trip up one month and 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 just get back on track. And so um, think about it as the the end result is going to be so great. And, you know, we've got a couple of different ways to uh, to manage debt that we're going to be talking about throughout the hour. But one thing, and I think that we've talked about this before, is <clears throat> before you start any of that, you really need to get a handle on what your debt is, where your money goes. So as you were saying, maybe it's a simple uh, electronic spreadsheet or pen to paper, just this is this is what I spend my money on each month. And then you c- can look at ways to we've talked about that cutting back on your expenses, then that if you cut back on your expenses, then you have a little bit more money that you can use to pay off your existing debt, I guess. Well, that does help. But you first have to start by looking right in the face of all that debt. And a lot of people try to delay that, put it off. Uh, they have several credit cards. I, I do remember a call we had a few years back, there were 21 credit cards. If you have 21 credit cards, are you really aware of how much total debt that you have? Probably not. So gather all of that, sit down, let it smack you in the face. Um, Not only how much you owe in total, but the interest rate on every single one of those cards. And I'm always saying to people, when you pull out a credit card, Kevin, you are buying money. And I would never buy any kind of product, even shoes, if I didn't know the price tag, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, But people do that all the time. And I'll ask them, well, what is the interest even on your mortgage? And they can't tell me off the top of their heads. You should know that. And every time you pull out that card, you should know that's costing me 19% if I let that roll over. And that is a shocker for most people to see that uh, written down and face that total. And then you can start to do something about it. <clears throat> so I don't have, I think I have three or four, which probably is a little bit so more. So why than do any. you have that many cards? <clears throat> well, I'm, I'm going to mention this before. One of them I have because I've had it since 1979. And so I think. I don't put a lot of uh, transactions on there, but I do think it helps the longevity thing when it comes to a credit score. Possibly, possibly. But we have also seen that um, even if you have something hanging out there that you think, well, if I close that, it's going to ding my credit score. It might, but that's going to be temporary. And so just simplify your life. Well, I, I do think I can I can manage them fairly, fairly well. And the, but what as you were saying, the uh, interest rate thing is very important because I, I have one now that's quite a bit higher interest rate. than. What the is other the rate? One. Do you know? You don't know. I don't know. But, <laughs> but I do have my little spreadsheet that I use each month to pay my bills. And I put the percentage rate next to, you know, it's a it's a, um, a an Excel sheet. Uh-huh, so, I've got right? the, I, so I don't know off the top of my head, but, but it's I there can somewhere. get the information yeah. very quickly. Yeah. But I think that the one that I the longevity one that I really don't use much anymore, I think is I think it is close to 20 percent. Yeah. And that's <laughs> the average right now. Isn't that shocking? Yeah. I mean, my gosh, 20 percent on something that maybe has already gone to goodwill. Not shoes, though. The, the, Not we, your we shoes. We keep the shoes till they fall off my feet. But OK. All right. <clears throat> um, but um, I think and plus, I think I got a couple of them I got because I had done a balance transfer thing once to try to help pay off debt. So but like I said, I think with four, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly easy to manage them. Uh, but but having listened to you on this show, like I said, I do now con- try to concentrate on using the one, you know, that has the low interest rate. And I'm some I've gotten a whole lot better about paying off the balance, you know, each month. Perfect. But yeah. on occasion. Um, but the other thing that I have learned is if you can't pay off the thing, that's good. But don't then that month go hog wild and, and add to that. You right. know? So in other words, right. I don't even consider reusing the card until it's back to zero. Mm-hmm. So. Well, I, I usually keep two cards going. One is for business because I want to keep that separate. And then one is for personal use. And I have had moments, honestly, Kevin, when I get that personal use statement, I go, there's no way I put that much on that card. And then I go and look at the list And it really does surprise me how those things can add up. You know, a few trips to the grocery store, uh, pick up your uh, 
drugs at the pharmacy, uh, all kinds of odds and ends, and boom, there you are with a big bill. Yeah, I'm the same way. You look at the. It's funny because you look at the total owed, and then you're like, "Where did that come from?" But then when you go down to the transactions, yeah. you're like, "Oh, okay." Yeah. Yes, that was <laughs> I me. Didn't remember doing that. And, and I've had moments of <clears throat> of looking at one transaction and saying, "Well, I don't remember that," and even calling them, and and usually that jogs my memory. <laughs> This is Money Talks. Uh, We're talking about ways to reduce your debt, but we're actually looking for your personal finance questions as we do each Tuesday morning. Send an email to money at mpbonline.org. Our friend uh, Liz Gill, co-worker, has sent us a message, and she says, my husband and I each have different types of charge cards in case we're in a country that doesn't take one type or the other, but we always pay them off in full each month, which is a good thing. Right. And of course, if you're going to travel outside the country, you need to really pay attention to that exchange rate. And different cards will offer different exchange rates. And there's some that are more attractive. Uh, You can search online for the best ones when you're traveling outside the country. Just curious, is there any difference really between Visa and MasterCard when it comes to credit cards? I mean, is it? I don't think so. I think you're going to find that most of them are accepted everywhere. Uh, The two that may not be accepted everywhere would be American Express and uh, then a Discover card. So when we talk about reducing debt, there's a couple of methods, I think, that are usually paired together. Um, And one is called the snowball method. So if you would remind us how that one works. Well, and that's my preferred way of doing it, which is a snowball method. So once you list all of the debt that you owe, usually it's going to be a bunch of credit cards, um, to start with the smallest dollar amount, because if you can get rid of that, there's just that that oomph that that gives you, like I can I can knock this out. And so to deal with the smaller ones first and then start to add that money to the larger ones. And it just feels good to knock some of those out and see that list start to condense. And of course, that means you're going to be saving your biggest amount for probably the last. Um, but you just start with, I put the minimum on everything except that one card. And of course, that also means you need to go back and look at your monthly budget, Kevin. And as you mentioned before, how much can I find in my budget to put towards debt and go beyond those minimums? And so that means really tightening your belt, looking for that extra amount, but putting that all on the smallest card, getting rid of that, and then going to the next one. And we had talked earlier just a few minutes ago about, you know, the the 20 cards and the the number of cards and how difficult it is um, to manage them sometimes. When this method, you're kind of quickly getting reducing the number of cards you have. So it's a little bit easier to manage that way. Right. And I would recommend um, unless you have a, a definite reason, once you clear out that debt, if you have several cards, just close the card. One possible con to uh, to this type of method, though, would be if you do have a lot of high interest credit cards, it's going to take a while, I guess. Right. So sometimes that that uh, smaller dollar amount has the lowest interest charge. And so you can say, well, but I'm going to save more on interest by concentrating on the larger amounts. But again, I like the idea of just having a little bit of a boost that you're really having some progress uh, getting through this list. I would agree because uh, as I've detailed my journey a couple of times on the air, but you're right. There's something about when you pay off that first credit card or you make some sort of significant step towards your goal, there is that fun, that uh, psychological boost, and that can sometimes give you the the gumption to keep on and not get discouraged. Exactly. I've even had some people, um, they would do a big spreadsheet and put it on the refrigerator (laughs) and mark it off as they go. If you have to put stars like we did at Sunday school, you know, whatever it takes to give you the motivation to get through this. So, uh, again, Liz Gill, our producer, says uh, sends a message. Walmart is starting holiday sales online on October 9th through the 12th. So wow. we haven't even hit wow. Halloween and yeah. we are shopping for what I assume is Christmas, I guess. And this is what I'm always saying with those credit card balances. Uh, don't let the next Christmas come around and you're still paying for last Christmas where you're just loading up on those credit cards. And we talked um, a couple of shows ago about how we're using credit cards more than we are checks or cash these days. But that also means that we're getting a little sloppy and we're starting to see those credit card balances go up. And that's a huge concern for me. 
Also, Liz reminds us that Amazon is having another one of its prime sales events uh, in October. With stuff you just can't live without. Well, because it's funny. It's the Amazon Prime Big Deals Days. So, yeah, they're trying yeah. to hype that up. Although I... I I'm in the market for something, and if I can find one cheap enough, uh, you know, I have several of the Echo Dot. Uh, I have three of them in my house. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I'm wondering if some of them are getting a little old because I'll say, you know, I, I think Ziggy is one of the names you can use. So I'll be like, Ziggy, turn off the television. And the little blue lights flash and flash and flash. And nothing and, happens. Yeah. And so... And you actually have to go up to the television well, and no, no. push the button <laughs> do or find the remote? That. No, I'll keep saying it until it does it. So the other night, I was actually turn off the television. So Ziggy, turn off the television, nothing. Ziggy, turn off the television, nothing. And then, all right, I'm going to admit I'm a nut here. So I shouted, Ziggy, turn off the television. I was getting mad at the little device. But, hey, when I shouted, it finally turned off the television. Well, I so. heard a great story of folks that we work with and um, older, uh, of course, and uh, had a um, – I, I think it was a grandson of – one of their friends or another relative came to their house and the little boy said, Alexa, play Baby Shark. <laughs> and of course, nothing happened. And then he said, Alexa, play Baby Shark. <laughs> and nothing happened. After the third time, they finally said, we don't have Alexa. <laughs> she doesn't live here. <laughs> I, I like those. They're, they were cheap enough. I, the, the, all three of them that I bought, I bought on sale. And they're, they're you know, they're useful. But it is it is frustrating when you say something and they just sit there and you're like, I ain't doing that. <laughs> But you're supposed to do what I tell you to do. Right, right. All right. You're listening to Money Talks. Kevin Farrell here with Dr. Nancy Lotridge-Anderson, president of New Perspectives. Nancy's a chartered financial analyst. On Money Talks, we're ready to take personal finance questions of any kind. Between your phone calls today, we're talking about ways to pay down your debt. we got a couple of callers lined up. Let's start in Memphis. Charles has called in today. Good morning, Charles. You're on the air. Hey, I want to ask you all professional um, I've retired, and I've never owned a home, and I've noticed that the credit bureau gives me a lower credit score, and it, when I've applied for credit in the last few years, like once I've changed cars and something else, they send me, the lender sends a letter saying um, your score is based on, of course, your payment of your accounts but also whether you own real estate. And I think that that's kind of discriminatory That because I prefer to rent. I've always rented. And it just seems that's a weird way to operate the credit bureau. Um, you know, I, I wondered if you all know about that. Yes, Charles. Um, so the way it's calculated, there are five different things that go into that. And the one you're talking about is the type of credit. So they're going to be looking at the types of credit that you have taken on. And it may not be a huge part because it's much more important to look at, are you paying your bills on time? That represents about a third of it. Um, also, what is the total amount of debt that you have taken on, your debt ratio? That also is about a third. So the piece that you're talking about if you don't have a mortgage, if you've never had a mortgage, it will cut into that. It's just a um, an algorithm that they use. You're right. It's not really fair to somebody who chooses not to own real estate. Um, as long as you're paying your bills, I think you should be fine. But just know that if you're bumping over the 700-point range, you're going to be good. They're going to love to see you come. <laughs> Well, another thing that they do is uh, they um, – I, I went to a credit um, help uh, website, and I'm a member of uh, Credit Karma, and they um, say the same thing, but they have a real weird way to, to assess your credit. Uh, I have a number of accounts, and I've paid perfectly for 10 years, but when I moved, I missed – a few days on the car payment because I uh, b because I moved, I had them send a new bill, and I, I was two days late. And so it shows me 99.9% on time, but Credit Karma thinks that's poor. Oh, well, again, uh, paying your bills on time is the single biggest element to that score. 
And yeah, I've had that happen too, especially with getting electronic statements. I miss something that comes through my email and I'm busy. And if you are late, it's going to sit out there for around seven years. Even if it's a few days, it was amazing to me that they could show me, credit card would show me a poor rating with 99.9% on time. And I've, I've complained to them two or three times. It makes no difference just the way they operate. Well, and I uh, say to people, if you find yourself in that position where you've missed something and you haven't missed it before, call the company that you have the loan with and just explain your situation because they're the one doing the reporting and see if they will offer you some forgiveness on the front end and not report that. Well, the credit bureaus are patently unfair because that particular company, I did call them, and they only report every three months, and yet your score changes weekly and monthly, and it just it, it just never seems to be in sync. And so, therefore, uh, you know, you can't win if you don't own property. Because I'll bet you if I own some property, my score would go up 50 to 80 points, I swear. Well, I I can't tell you how many points, but it does have an impact. And you are correct to monitor your credit. And so we talk about freecreditreport.com or annualcreditreport.com. Excuse me, annualcreditreport.com. And you can pull those credit reports and look at them and make sure they're accurate. Because errors can cause you real problems. And, you know, um, you need to pay attention to those. Thank you so much for your your answers. Thanks, Charles. Thank you, Charles, for your call. One thing I would say, too, and I think uh, Experian calls it boost or something, those that you can apply for, do they not some in some ways allow for a rent receipt? I mean, because I think that's the difference. It's easier to monitor a mortgage payment because it's usually done through a company, whereas you might have a landlord that you're paying rent to. But I think there might be ways that he could investigate to where he gets credit for paying his rent on time. Possibly. Possibly with something like that, yeah. But still, you're it's not just paying on time. It's the types of credit that you've taken on. All right. Let's uh, stay on the phone lines. Off to Macomb we go next. And Joanna's on the line. Good morning. What do you have for us today? Good morning. I wanted to know, sometimes I have been out of town and went shopping, and you know they will give you a discount on your purchase if you apply for a credit card. And I have good credit rating, and so I apply for it. But then when the card comes, If I don't want the card, is it okay to just cut that card up? Well, you need to close the account. Um, And so you need to officially close the account. And, Joanna, I am notorious. They know in my office I love a discount. And the only thing that kept me from taking advantage of those and leaving myself with tons of cards to deal with is I froze my credit. Um, So uh, when they offer it to me, I just have to say, I'm sorry, I can't. Um, But... Um, I have had the uh, occasion to open a car because of the discount, thought I had closed it, only to find the next time that I went in that the card was and the account was still active. So you need to officially close it, maybe put it in writing, uh, make sure it's all shut down if you don't want it any longer. Okay, but if I don't activate the account, you know, when the card comes, it's, it's still there. there. It's going to still oh, be there. Okay. Yeah, it's still going to be there. You're going to, okay. they're going to show you with an account. Yeah. Okay, so can I call the credit union and get a list of, or either go online and get a list of cards that I have? Well, you can go. Close it out like that? You can go to annualcreditreport.com and request a credit report from each of the three main credit reporting agencies, and look and okay. see if you have any of those hanging out there that maybe you need to address. Okay. Good luck. All right. Thank you. I can do that. All right. Thanks for the call. I would say, too, beware of fine print because uh, the whoever's offering it might have something that says you're obligated to do something within. Because to me, when I get a lot of credit card offers of these amazing things, it's always, you know, spend X amount of dollars in the next however, you know, long. And, of course, it's like I don't I try not to use my credit cards. Right. Yeah. Um, so I guess maybe if you read the fine print and then if there is some obligations, you got to decide whether it's worth your while, I guess. Well, and the only store cards that I am willing to hang on to now are the ones that give me a discount when I shop in that store. 
other cards I really have no use for. But that's part of the game, the, how they're adding to their profit margins with all of these uh, retailers is to get you to sign up for their MasterCard or their Visa. And they don't just want you to use it in their stores. They want you to use it at all kinds of places because they're going to get a cut of that every time you make a purchase. And so just be careful of having too many of those hanging out there. And I do know that it seems like a lot of retailers, when you go to check out, do you have the R credit card and would you like to get one? Oh, they are required yeah. to ask that. Yeah. Uh, we had a caller who could not stay on the line, but had a good question. And so Betty asks if this is a good time to purchase a house with an adjustable rate mortgage. Yes. And uh, we have been uh, encouraging people to look at that option these days. Because we believe that rates will come down. Now, we don't know how long it will take. Looking at 8% mortgage rates is a little bit stunning to me right now. Gosh, Kevin, it wasn't that long ago. They were in the 3% range. We had people calling us just bragging about what low mortgage rates they'd gotten. Um, and that's happened very quickly. But we think things will settle down and we'll see it come down somewhat. Now, one qualifier to that is... We think we're probably going to be living with a little bit higher mortgage rates for a long period of time. That going back to those three to four percent rates is probably not realistic. But if you do an adjustable rate mortgage, make sure you understand how it will work. Most of the time, they're going to be fixed for a period of time. It could be five years or seven years. And then after that point in time, it starts to adjust. Make sure you understand how it adjusts, what standard they're using. And of course, it can adjust downward. And you also have to look ahead to think about in five or seven years, if the rates go down enough, am I in a position to refinance? Am I going to have the income at that time? Will they? Will I get qualified so I can get a new mortgage? So when I bought my house in the 90s, got an adjustable rate mortgage, and the one, and this was a long time ago, so it might have changed now, but I remember that it, it could be adjusted each year, but that there was a cap that's of, typical. Over the life of the loan. So it couldn't be more than, so if it were X percent and there were a cap were 10 percent more than that, it couldn't be more than X plus 10. Right. And it's typical to see um, an annual maximum adjustment of, of around 2 percent. Well, that's a big deal. You think about if you've got a 6 percent loan and it goes to 8 percent, that's a pretty big difference on your monthly payment. So they are required now, if you have an adjustable rate mortgage, they are required in the paperwork to show you the adjustments and the most it can go to so that you see that monthly payment at its highest level staring you in the face and you, you understand that's full disclosure, that's where I may end up. Um, but that is an option for a lot of people right now, but you just have to pay attention. Uh, back to the phone lines we go. Kelton has called in from the road. Good morning, Kelton. You're on the air with us. Go ahead. Hey, good morning. Yeah, I was watching some football this weekend, and I saw several ads about um, Congress is trying to support the big box retailers, and they're going to take away, um, like, points, whether you get miles or dollars or whatever. And I'm just not a uh, – you got any information on that? Oh, gosh, Kelton, I have not seen that. Uh, of course, I'm not surprised you were watching football this weekend. Uh, that was on my uh, television at my house, too. Um, I, I, I'm not aware of that. Um, it kind of surprises me um, how they approach that because, you know, that's that's the retailer's option to offer that. We'll check on that and see if we can't let you know. All right. I appreciate it. It was just it's it seems like you really don't know if they're trying to support the consumer or who they're supporting, but it's like call your congressman and tell them to vote no on this. So, yeah, I appreciate it. Okay, we'll find out about that. All right, uh, All Kelton. Right, thanks so much. In fact, uh, our colleague Liz Gill is doing a, a search right now, so we should have something on that in just a couple of minutes, so stay tuned. Um, actually, she's got – oh, good. So we'll pull that up in just a minute. Let's spend a little bit of time, though. We talked about the snowball method. Sort of the uh, partner to that is called the avalanche method. So Who came up with these names? <laughs> Snowballs, avalanche, yeah. It so, just seems like it's all coming at you at once, right? It's, it's cold. So It's yeah. cold. All right. Uh, well, the avalanche method is just starting – to pay down your highest interest card, regardless of the balance. You're just going to look for which one is charging me the most 
and I'm going to deal with that one first. And I'm going to put the bulk of what I can pay, just do the minimum on all these other cards, but the most of what I can pay can go on the high card. And then once it's gone, I go to the next highest interest card and deal with it that way. And of course, the problem with that is for a lot of people, their highest interest card is often the biggest amount that they're facing. And so it means it takes a long time to get that out of the way. And sometimes I just see people with uh, debt repayment fatigue and they give up and I don't want them to give up. I guess one pro of this would be that you will save probably some interest charges in the long run. Yes, absolutely. It makes mathematical sense to to deal with the highest interest charges first. But, you know, we're human beings. And so we need a few victories in the meantime. And also, this was interesting. The the notes I have um, that says it might not be the best approach if you have low interest rates on your credit cards or debts with prepayment penalties. Are there a lot of loans that that you get dinged for paying early? There are some. And most of the time we see those prepayment penalties in a fixed uh, rate payment plans. So it could be on a car loan, uh, in some cases, even on a mortgage. You want to make sure that there are no prepayment penalties um, so that you can um, clear that out ahead of time. We're glad you found our show, Money Talks. Kevin Farrell here with Dr. Nancy Lotter janderson president of New Perspectives. We've been getting a lot of help from our support crew. Uh, Abram Nanny's running the board for us. Liz Gill's answering phones. And so we want to follow up on a couple of things. First of all, Abram mentioned that his, what is it, his student? The student kill- loans are getting started again. Yeah. yeah. In October. Yeah. So, and that's another big pull on the economy because there are a lot of people who had those payments deferred uh, during the pandemic. It's kicking back in. That's going to reduce the amount of uh, discretionary income that you have to spend on other things. So, if you have that uh, facing you, you need to contact your servicer. Find out if you qualify for an income-based repayment plan. See if you qualify based on working for a nonprofit. There are several programs out there that are available for federally subsidized uh, student loans, and you want to take advantage of them. And uh, Liz Gill found something for us on the, um, the bill. It's the Credit Card Competition Act of 2023. Uh, proposed by two U.S. Senators, Richard Durbin and Robert Marshall, one a Democrat, one a Republican, interestingly enough. The law, heavily backed by the retail lobby, would regulate the rate that Visa and MasterCard retailers uh, charge, I'm sorry, the rate they charge retailers to process transactions on their networks. The legislation would allow big box retailers like Walmart or Target to choose cheaper, less safe credit card processing networks that might expose private consumer information to foreign networks in China and Russia. Uh, And also, I guess, how it would affect rewards is rewards are funded by the fees that merchants pay to the company. And so they're considered part of the value there. But I'm a little uh, skeptical of this because um, it, it seems like the opposition to this probably comes from the credit card companies, Kevin, because they make quite a big uh, amount somewhere in the 3% range on every transaction. And so they don't want competition to come into play. Now, using some scare tactics to say, oh my gosh, your your information is going to be exposed to uh, hackers, possibly Chinese hackers or Russian hackers, well, guess what? We're already been exposed. I have people calling our office every day with notices about breaches that have happened. So that's not just particular to some lower cost alternatives, um, but um, I would just be careful about jumping on the bandwagon because this sounds like something that Visa and MasterCard is trying to push against to maintain their profit margins. And so we will keep an eye on that and follow that as it works its way through the legislative process. We've got another caller on the line, so we say good morning to Francis, who's called in from Walls. You're on the air with us. Go ahead. Well, good morning. My question concerns credit cards that have reduced your credit limit on the card because you're not using the card anymore uh, frequently enough. This has happened to two cards I own. Uh, they reduce my uh, outstanding credit limit. Should I cancel those cards? Well, if you want to keep the card, Francis, the first thing you do, just pick up the phone and call them. 
and ask them if they will bump it back up. Often they will if they have this idea that you're going to start using the card and you value the card. They don't want to lose you as a customer, especially if you've been paying your bills on time. Um, So it's just a matter of asking if that limit can be bumped up. Okay. Well, I did uh, request a, uh, a resumption of the balance that I had had prior to them taking it away, and they told me I had to wait another six months to request an increase to go back up to what they had taken me from. Interesting. So um, do you maintain a balance on the card? Does it roll over every month? Uh, no, the card is zero. It's I zero. Used the card. Uh, yeah, I thought and that's I what you that said. That may have been the problem. I, I had not used the card. I had it, but you know, I I did not use it. Well, if you don't want it, if you're not using it, close the card. If you value that and you want that card, and this is a problem, you might just you know go into a convenience store and put a small amount on the card, show that you're using it a little bit along, pay off the balance, and then contact them again and see if they will bump up the limit. Okay. That sounds like a plan. Thank you very much. I love your show. Thanks. Right. Good luck. And also, Bye. I would say to Francis, when you contact the current you know, uh, uh, the card that you currently have, I would s- s- come out and say, I'm thinking about, you know, closing this account and opening it. Another- I mean, it's competitive enough in the credit card market to yeah, where they absolutely. don't want to lose you as a as a customer. If you've got a good credit score, a good credit record, they don't want to lose you. And so they will offer you things if you ask. All right. Uh, we've only got about a minute left, not time to delve into another topic, but let's do a quick review. And I think that, uh, again, before we get into the snowball method, the avalanche method, that sort of thing, I think it's important to remember what we talked about at the top of the show, and that is kind of prepare yourself for uh, for paying off your debt, both in mindset, but then again, kind of looking at what, what you've got existing before you tackle things. Yeah. Get that uh, list in front of you. Face it. That's the first thing. It's not going away. Look at the amounts. Look at the interest charges and come up with a plan and uh, give yourself some grace if you don't stay on the wagon the whole time. Um, But keep going after it because the light at the end of the tunnel is how much money you're going to have that's extra for you to do fun things with. And I can say amen to several of those things. Again, what helped me was finally saying this is how much you are on those credit cards but then when i paid them off it's amazing how you can do things and i mean before it was always like well i can't do this i've, I've got to have money or, or you paid off your credit card i don't have any left in my monthly exactly. budget yeah and that's all gone now and it, it, it really is a huge lifting of weight off your shoulders personal uh story there so <laughs> so see you are offering advice <laughs> that's right money talks is a production of mpp think radio funded in part by generous financial support from listeners to hear today's show or a previous show you can go to moneytalks.mpbonline.org or listen to the podcast by searching for money talks on your podcasting app so for dr nancy lotcher janderson i'm kevin farrell join us every tuesday at nine for money talks heard only on mpb think radio This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand.